Welcome back to Tipton Bros. Today, we'll be discussing the Japanese Nakajima G5N Long Range Heavy Bomber. Before we begin, I must disclose that I am no expert and never claim to be. Now, let's get into it. Prior to the Second World War, Japan frantically accelerated its aeronautical research to keep pace with the United States. Tensions continued to mount between the two world powers, and to be viewed as anything less than an equal was unacceptable. This competition fueled innovation, forging the Empire of Japan into a hotbed for fighter aircraft, debuting the revolutionary Mitsubishi A6M0 and Nakajima Ki-43 in early 1939. Despite these remarkable advancements, the island nation lacked a true heavy bomber, which could patrol the vast expanses of the Pacific. Specifications were immediately issued by the IJN, requiring a minimum range of 3,500 miles, or 3,000 nautical miles, and the capability to deliver an immense bomb load. These conditions alone made a four-engine layout the only viable option. Japanese manufacturers attempted to meet the set parameters, but a clear lack of experience became apparent. The scale of the aircraft was simply beyond the scope of many domestic engineers at the time. Reluctantly, the Imperial Japanese Navy outsourced their search to the foreign market in hopes of finding a platform to build upon. This hunt would yield the short-lived Douglas DC-4E prototype airliner. The one-off American transport was purchased by the Japan Airways Company in late 1939 and surreptitiously transferred into IJ NAS possession. The aircraft would be dealt to Nakajima from that point forward to undergo inspection and disassembly. The DC-4E was a precursor to the DC-4 and ever-popular Douglas C-54 Skymaster. Nakajima resumed the process of reverse engineering, enhancing the design and molding the once-failed airliner into a formidable heavy bomber. When the smoke cleared, what remained was the G5N, a sleek yet imposing arrangement that would hopefully set the standard for the Japanese air industry. The G5N, also referred to as the Experimental Type 13 Shi Attack Bomber, in naval designation, was much like its contemporaries of the day, an all duralumin construction with fabric-covered control surfaces. The triple rudder tail structure was reduced to a more practical twin configuration, and a conventional monoplane layout was selected with mid-mounted wings. Power plants were produced in-house to support this towering behemoth utilizing four Nakajima NK-7A Mamori 11-series 14-cylinder air-cooled radial piston engines. Each unit generated 1,870 horsepower for a cumulative output of roughly 7,500 horsepower. This, in turn, drove a four-bladed propeller assembly. The aircraft employed a heavily glazed forward fuselage, which provided a substantial field of view for both the bombing crew, located in the nose cone, and the flight personnel, positioned in the above cockpit. The DC-4E's retractable tricycle landing gear was also preserved on the newly minted G5N1 long-range strategic bomber, gifted the moniker of Shinzan, meaning Deep Mountain. Everything seemed to be in place for the Colossus to take flight, which it did April 8th. 1941. Trials were mediocre, as the bulky frame paired with unreliable engines crippled its performance. Engineers rushed to correct the myriad of ailments present on the G5N1, while three further airframes were completed. Development crept along at a snail's pace, until a solution was reached. Two additional aircraft were modified to retain the Mitsubishi MK-4B Kasai 12-series radial engine, which produced 1,530 horsepower. This proved successful, and the remaining two unaltered airframes were equipped with the upgraded power plant, receiving the designation of G5N2. Production halted at six examples, two of the G5N1 variant and four of the G5N2. By this point in the war, Japan was merely surviving, depleted of resources with any flicker of hope snuffed out by the American onslaught. Material was tight, and frivolous side projects like the struggling G5N bomber were a lost cause. Four of the six airframes would be overhauled and pushed into service by the Imperial Japanese Navy as long-range transports, letting nothing go to waste. Afforded the final designation of G5N2-L, 
The repurposed bomber was given the Allied codename Liz and flew until the war's closing days. Before we wrap up, let's quickly cover specifications for the G5N1 Shinzan. Maximum speed was 260 miles per hour, with a cruise speed residing at 173 miles per hour. Range extended 2,650 miles or 2,300 nautical miles, and service ceiling topped out at an underwhelming 24,440 feet. Powering the aircraft were four Nakajima NK-7A Mamori 11-series 14-cylinder air-cooled radial piston engines, which produced 1,870 horsepower each. All four units drove a four-bladed Sumitomo constant speed propeller assembly. The G5N1 was manned by a crew of seven, had a length of 101 feet 8 inches, a height of 28 feet 10 inches, and an overall wingspan of 138 feet 2 inches. Gross weight sat at 62,000 pounds, while max takeoff weight was 70,550 pounds. Lastly, armament. Four 7.7mm Type 92 machine guns were deliberately placed around the fuselage. Situated in the nose, rear-facing in the ventral bath, port side at the waist, and parallel on the starboard side. Each of these weapons was atop a flexible mount. Two heavy-hitting 20mm Type 99 Mark I autocannons were also present, located in a dorsal and a tail turret protecting the rear. When all was said and done, the G5N ended its journey where it began, ironically, as an unsuccessful long-range transport. I hope you've enjoyed today's brief overview of the Japanese Nakajima G5N heavy bomber. We are a small channel, so a like is greatly appreciated, and recommendations are always welcome. Again, I am no expert, and never claim to be. Until next time, on Tipton Bros.